Maybe that was on me. Howdy. 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 Ooh, that's not bad. How's everybody doing? Good? All right. Fired up to be here? Yeah. Or thinking about what's for lunch? Duncan, right? Who knows? Anybody know who said this? No. Famous athlete. Long time ago, though. Yogi Berra was a baseball player. Funny dude, he had a lot of good quotes. You come to a fork in the road, take it. That's kind of a spin on, you know, when I came to a fork in the road, I took I took the road less traveled. Okay, it's just a joke. Talk about you guys. Who are you? Ross. Huh? Ross, yeah, good, true. Who are you guys? Students. Yeah, collectively. We're going to talk about you guys today. And it'll all relate into what we're doing for this week's assignment. All right, where are you guys going? What are you going to do? You need a job? You going to stare at your cell phone in the back? Yeah. Come on. <coughs> what are you guys going to do? Where are you going? With the flow. Get a job. That's what we're going to do, right? With the flow. Good answer. Yeah, okay. What's going to happen when you finish here? You stay here? Super seniors? Yeah. Grad school? Anybody waiting out in the national championship plan? Anybody staying here until we win a football title? <laughs> I had multiple students tell me that. There you go. What the heck are you going to do when you get a job? Make money, right? Pay bills. Yep. Exactly. Is it going to be way better when you work? Maybe not. <laughs> Some of it, right? Some of it will be worse. Okay. <clears throat> information. Facts provided about something or someone. Knowledge is information and skills acquired through experience and education, the theoretical or practical understanding of a subject. Which one do you all have? Not both. No. Some in some areas and one in some areas and one in other areas. We touched on this, I think, last week. You have all the information in the world. All of it. It's all at your fingertips. You guys can Google anything, right? That's the bricks. Knowledge is how to build a house. Y'all have no idea how to build a house. It's not your fault. I'm not slamming you but it's true because no matter what you do, whether you commission or not, you're not there yet. Okay. Otherwise you wouldn't have to go through OCS, right? Okay. This is a huge thing that you guys are dealing with. And I'm talking about this. I'm not harping on you to knock on you guys. That's why you're in school and all that good stuff. But all of this is how it relates to the real world and getting a job. Okay. Monk, you good? Stand up if you need to. Senior, or juniors this morning were falling asleep, and I can't figure out if it was me or them, so I'm trying, okay? All right, you guys have all the information in the world, seriously. You guys know way more than a lot of people, um, except your parents, even though you thought you did. Call them up and tell them you're sorry, because you were kind of a turd when you were a teenager, all right? We all were, all right? But you think you know everything, but you're not quite there, okay? And, and again, this is not me trying to slam you guys, but without a map or GPS, how many of you could drive to Amarillo from there? <laughs> Figured out, just said north, west, north, west. Okay. Signs. Signs. Some of you can make it, right? Some of you are going to end up in Florida. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's the difference, okay, between information and knowledge. Without the information, you don't know how to get there. You guys have it, but you have to put it all together. All right. That's simplifying it. Cool. What are you guys going to do in the workforce? What are you going to do? What's your job? Pilot, right? Is that the goal? Okay. What else? Cybersecurity network design. Okay. Good. Do you know how to fly? No. Well, I, I can probably Not you. figure it out. Not really. <laughs> do you know how to fly? I think it's just skill that I have not learned. Do you know how to fly? Yeah. Okay. So there's a few things you got to piece together, right? Cybersecurity. What else? Engineer? Okay, cool. Right, sure. All the things you're going to school for, right? Hoping to learn? 
the hard part is the knowledge piece. Believe it or not, that's where classes like Psalms can come in. Because you know, oh, boring, it's a waste of time. Okay. When you go to work, and I can't remember one of the classes, one of the juniors last week we talked about it, one of them we actually didn't, which is my fault. They want to see if you can problem solve. Okay. Anybody know who uh, Jacob Collins is? <clears throat> he was a, a senior last year, but he's still here for his fifth year. He was in the Corps, uh, was CEO of his outfit. Okay. Jacob Collins wanted to contract in the military. Uh, aerospace engineer, phenomenal PT, good looking kid, honestly. Fully comfortable admitting that. Okay. And because he made a note, I wanted to be uh, an officer in the Marine Corps and I couldn't get in. I'm like, well, why? And he's like, my eyes. I'm like, second opinion, just like I was telling you guys for class. Okay. He's like, I've had like six opinions. I've gone every route. Um, I, I can't, they won't let me in any branch. So I'm talking, because I don't like when somebody that is exactly who the Marine Corps is looking for gets told no or any branch. Okay. It doesn't make sense to me when sometimes you guys get told no. Again, health wise, I can't help you. So he says, look, I've come to grips. I can serve my country other ways. I really want to work for NASA. Okay, good to know. Get to know him a little better, see that he's a good dude. I said, a buddy of mine in the Guard in Houston works for NASA. He works for Northrop Grumman. Most of it's contract, okay? Very few people just work for NASA. And he says, man, um, you got any Aggies up there worth anything? He didn't go to school here. And he's like, because um, I got 100 resumes, and they all look the same. And these are all over the country, right? Everyone has aerospace engineering. Everybody has a good GPA. They have the extracurricular stuff. And I don't have the time to go through it. I said, honestly, there's a guy you need to look at. I think he's a great young man. He wants to do exactly what you guys do. Okay? And so they hook up, and he got an internship. All right, All right come on in. And Annalise, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So he gets an internship, and now he's got a job offer waiting for him as soon as he graduates. He's got one more year, he finishes in May, and he's going to work for Northrop Grumman, and he's gonna help people put, put people on the moon and Mars in his career, okay? The reason he got hired is my buddy went into his office one day, and Jacob was trying to figure something out that he was told to do that he didn't know how to do. Here's your task, go do it. He was on YouTube trying to figure it out, okay? And the guy's like, that's exactly what I need because I'll get interns that don't know how to do it. It's hard stuff, all right? We're putting people in space. He's like, but we give interns tasks they should be able to do, and they just sit in their office and wait for someone to help them, or they're too afraid to ask for help. And he was trying to solve it on his own. He's like, this is exactly what I'm looking for. Look, man, you can come ask me for help, but you better have exhausted all other resources. Okay? And now he's going to go work for that. And this summer, while that happened, Northrop Grumman won the contract of the Gateway. Any aerospace in here? The, I call it Space Buckies. It's going to be the thing that orbits the moon that's the go-between between here and Mars. So it's, I got to go in this thing. They built a mock-up, they competed, and the government awarded, and it's like a multi-billion dollar contract. And now, a kid from the Corps, who didn't get to serve in the Marine Corps like he wanted to, is going to be helping build that thing, which I think is pretty sweet. Okay all because he was trying to problem solve. And I'm sure you guys hear that in other classes. Critical thinking, problem solving, right? That's what matters, okay? The things we talk about in Psalms all the way through that I try to teach you is how it relates to the real world, how it relates to your professions, civilian or military. Okay, questions? Okay, I can't get all of you a job. <laughs> but I will try, all right? What's going to separate you guys from other employees? Yep. Yeah. Okay. I don't know anything about the core. What about the core is going to make you a better employee? Leadership and interpersonal communication. What does that mean? That means we know how to lead others without being asked and we know We? How all of you? Everybody? Probably. So I can go hire a freshman? No. Why not? You just said they, they learned you. that. Don't say we. I. If you're in an interview, okay, you can use it sometimes. It's, when you want to be humble, <laughs> you can say, we did that, okay? If you screw, if, good football coaches, in my opinion, 
take all the blame when they lose. And when they win, all the credit goes to the players. Okay? That's a good way to treat your careers. I mean, be careful. But same thing. What else? What's going to separate you guys? Know how to handle a lot of tasks. Like, I'm able to like manage my time effectively to be able to do a lot of stuff in a short amount of time. And I can manage my time and stress Good. effectively. Perfect. Yeah. Because of the core? Because of your been What's different about the core? Why are you guys any different than other students? It's a 24-7 real-life leadership learning laboratory. Okay. So, but can't you get that when you go to school? Not really. So engineering majors here don't get that? No. Okay. <laughs> Good answer. I don't know. If I'm a recruiter or if I'm interviewing you I, and, I, and they don't know anything about it, okay, that's fine. Most of them, on, how many of you all ask, go to career fair or whatever, and they think you're going military? Right? They have no idea that 60% of you don't go military. I tell people that all the time. They're like, what? Okay. What else? What's going to separate you guys? We don't get days off, so we have to manage, like, we have to handle school and all the added stuff without, I mean, most times, like, yeah, we'll get maybe Sunday, you know, it's not on Sunday, but even still get, might have meetings on Sundays, we got game days on Saturdays, so no. we just do all our Great answer. stuff within. Huge days. separator. Right? Those friggin' non regs. <laughs> I have a non reg one in my senior class, poor kid. <laughs> okay. What else? Yes, ma'am. We have um, like four years of leadership learning classes, so we're certified leaders, leaders to learn. What makes you a certified leader? Tell me about his leadership classes. Okay, what's Psalms? It's like built to teach you leadership. Yeah, what'd you learn? Teach you Great. How many of you are going to get this certificate? Leadership certificate. Okay. How many of you are not? Or don't know? Why not? Like the certificate to take the second semester in senior year? Yeah. I don't want to take the class. Why? Uh, and I'm not judging you. I'm curious. Just take an extra class like in my major. Okay. So. Okay. Why not? Oh, okay. It's just spring term of your senior year is the only optional one. So if you take that one, you can get the certificate. Is that it? Yeah, it's a one credit class. Same as this. I teach it. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, my intention is to do that, but like, what if, what if we transfer here and we can like do the first? You, you, if you missed a class, you can go back and take it. I have a senior in my junior class right now. No? Undecided? It's fine. Okay, I don't want to put you, I'm kind of putting you on the spot. But is there a difference between the leadership certificate that Annalise mentioned? Annalise? Annalise. Annalise, okay. Is there a difference between that and your degree? Yes. What? The degree is like a set curriculum, while the leadership certificate shows that you've taken classes, but you've also had practical application of the knowledge that you've learned. So, better or worse? So you just made it sound better than your degree. Yeah. Better in a way. In my opinion, yeah, sure, okay, sure. What do you, no? What do you got? I just don't think so. Why not? Your degree you're going to spend 120 hours on, and your certificate is like what you get is what you put in. Do you have to have a degree to be an engineer? No. Yes. Yes. Nope. Yes. No. Absolutely not. A friend of mine is an engineer. Never got a degree. Okay. You can go, you can learn how to do all that stuff. Well, that's your certificates, right? He does not. As, well, you have to get certified mm -hmm. um, as a uh, PCE, whatever it is, PE, professional engineer. Anyone can take that test. Okay, does it help to go to school? Absolutely, not required. There's no difference in that leadership certificate and your degree if you put the value on it. Okay. Anyone disagree? If you get the certificate and put it on your resume, you are putting that as a value. Why? Why would you do that? You're applying for jobs and they see a Hollingsworth Center Ethical Leadership Certificate. Why would you do that if you're applying for jobs? Makes you look better. Huh? Makes you look better? Yes! 
It makes you look better, right? You look better than anybody who doesn't have that. Right? Okay? Because they the recruiter doesn't know. A recent graduate got paid ten thousand dollars more than the peers he got hired with because of his certificate. I told Dr. Keller and Dr. Brown. They were like, see, see? <laughs> right? That's a big difference maker if you put the value on it. I have a, a, another buddy, Air Force, who graduated here in 08, and he got it, makes fun of it all the time, makes fun of me, okay? But his opinion of what we should be teaching in the core, he's pretty much uninformed, okay? He thinks the fact that you guys have a Starbucks is deplorable, okay? So the value and what you guys put on your resume is 100% up to you. Okay? You guys can go get jobs right now. You can work your way up the ladder. Yeah, does it help to have a degree if, if you think it does? All right. And look, the, to me, the bachelor's degree is a new high school diploma. Okay? You pretty much have to have one. But you really don't. Right? Usually that's in a job description simply because everybody else puts it there. Okay? There's plenty of technical jobs where you don't need it. But that's a different matter. What matters to you guys is how relatable you make it and how you market yourselves. Okay. I know that some of you guys don't like Psalms and won't like Psalms, but it's pretty easy to teach you how to be an engineer, really. It's a lot more difficult to teach you how to be a key player in an organization with an engineering degree, okay. especially young hires. Who's heard this? Yeah? What do we think? Not always. It's bullshit. Mm. <laughs> sort of. Okay? This can absolutely happen. All right? But this is what my generation was told when I was an undergrad. Okay? Were you, are, are you taking notes? Yeah. Okay, just check. Everyone was told this, and it's nonsense. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, you should like what you're doing. Who, hey, who's had internships? Some of you all have already, right? Okay, and some of you had bad experiences. Was it you that got taken across state lines and moved furniture? Yeah, right? Let's, let's help you with work, right? Damn near got kidnapped. Okay? <laughs> but it's, this is a hard thing until probably later in your career. All right. It doesn't mean it can't happen. If all you want to be is a marine pilot and you were happy as a pig in slop, being a marine pilot and live in your one bedroom apartment, okay, with one chair and a fridge full of beer, then you're good to go. Two chairs? Two chairs? Okay. You gonna have a guest over? <laughs> oh, okay, good for you. <laughs> All right. Yeah, and that's fair, right? Totally fair, okay? And you can pay the bills and you're good to go. I said this last class. Anybody remember who said that? He's one of the wealthiest men in the world. Bill Gates. Nice work. There you go. Paying attention. A million extra credit points. He never took a day off in his 20s. Everyone likes to say, Harvard dropout, billionaire. Well, that's a pretty big gap of what actually happened. Right? It was a total grind for him. Sacrificing friends, family, and all that good stuff. Yeah? This one's a little easier. You should be able to figure this out. Who said that? Jobs. Did Steve Jobs go to school? He went for like a year. Okay. Uh, he went to a private school actually in Oregon. And one of the reasons that uh, Apple came out with all the fonts, like 10 million different fonts, is because he studied design for a little bit. He took one class and made that a huge difference maker. And then he found <coughs> Wozniak, who built the computer. But Apple never would have happened just because of Wozniak, they had to have jobs, okay? And an, another really interesting dude of what he did in his young life, okay? Um, you know, you remember the, hopefully you remember like the black turtleneck and jeans, man. He was ruthless Bato when he was a businessman in his younger years, okay? But learned a lot about what he really wanted to do. He went and started Pixar, and then Apple bought Pixar. 
pretty smart move. Worked out for him okay. Right. Okay. Who do you guys look up to as leaders? Yes, ma'am. Okay, good. Who else? Yes, sir. Uh, dead, good friend of mine. Okay. Historical figures. Such as? Uh, Winston Churchill. Churchill, okay, good. Who else? Parents. Parents, good. Yes, ma'am. Brother, good. What about Churchill? Since I don't know who his coach is. What about Winston Churchill? Oh. You may not know who Winston Churchill is. Okay, good. Well, how many people know this aspect of his family life? He was head of the Department of the Navy, like, you know, the English side. Yeah. And during the First World War, he had this grand glant grand idea to basically flank the Ottomans and cut them off from, the, from Europe. It fell spectacularly and he got shunned basically for the rest of the war. And up until the Second World War, he he's continued to strive and continued to you know push his politics and stuff and ended, ended up getting the, P, the you know, prime minister spot mm -hmm. and uh, I think Neville Chamberlain freaking dropped the ball with Hitler and stuff. And there are books that think that describe Winston Churchill, Churchill as the single greatest leader ever. That completely gloss over the fact that he screwed up huge when he was younger. <laughs> That's exactly right. Good answer. George Washington, anyone? MLK? Mm -hmm. Any other historical figures? Mm. Yes, ma'am. He's not like really well known, but I think he's a leader in medicine as far as uh, Dr. Patch Adams. Yeah, he, sure. He created um, like a program of students that would go abroad and voluntarily uh, provide medical assistance. Did Patch have some rough spots in his career? That's kind of what led him to the type of medicine he does. <clears throat> if you guys look at leaders that you guys look up to, they are not perfect. Neither of you guys. It's 100% okay. Again, a generational thing is that you get labeled as being afraid to fail. Okay? Part of that is because everything you guys do is documented, right? <laughs> Everybody takes a picture. You're out at Northgate, right? You guys are pretty savvy not to post stuff on social media. They can get you in trouble, right? What if it's somebody you don't like? <laughs> Click, boom. Right? Or somebody can do it to you. Okay. It's a really challenging thing when you're talking about who you look up to because they're not perfect, and we'll get into that further in the semester. But of the people you're talking about, do you look to be like them or just to understand their leadership style? China, emulate or understand? Who's trying to emulate? Why? Okay, good leader, right? I want to be like them. Different than your style? No. no? Similar? Okay. Who else? Football, NFL, who's the best coach? Multiple Super Bowls. Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick. Super good dude? Kind of an asshole, right? 
Can't stand the media. Won't ask, answer questions. Not a good draft record. Okay. Winning his coach in football. Is he a good leader? When it comes to winning football games, right? Is he someone you want to emulate? That's up to you. Maybe. Maybe you hate the media. I don't blame you. Okay. Who said this? Famous individual, wasn't me. Guesses. Wild guesses. Albert Einstein. Why? Why do you say that? Yeah. Came up with theory of relativity. How many are there? There's two. When he came up with theory of relativity, there were maybe five people on the entire planet who could really understand it. And he became a household name. They asked him to be a president of a country later in his career, which he turned down. He's like, I'm not doing that shit. I'm a scientist, bro. Okay? But he was viewed as a leader. And his career field was super technical and super specialized, right? But everybody loved him because they thought he was going to change the world, which he did. Okay? You guys can do it too. <laughs> all right. There's a reason we're talking about all this stuff. In a debate, political debate, whatever, debate with friends, who determines the victor? Whoever's listening. Yeah. yeah. What, do you, what do you mean by that? What else? Who, who picks who wins? Huh? The judges. If there's judges, sure. Which is everyone that didn't hear the conversation. Political debate for President of the United States. Who determines who wins? The people. Party lines. <laughs> Bingo. You do. This candidate won because they said what I like. That candidate is a loser. Right? Pretty much what it comes down to. Okay? So can you measure leadership? Yes. Anybody say no? Why not? You, you can't measure it like you would other things. Like, uh, you can't measure it like a finite thing. But you can measure the quality of it. Like, you can't measure it compared to how much water is in here? So, what do you mean, finite? Measure it. Hold on, I want him to finish. What do you mean? Like a, can't put like a number on it. Say like leadership. This leadership was a hundred out of thousand or. Okay. Am I agree? But, but you can't say like this person's leadership was good versus bad. What's the difference? Why can't you measure that? Whose outfits are good at PT? How's your academics? <laughs> Alright, good. You're good at both. Okay. Are there outfits here good at PT and bad at academics? Yes. yes. Everyone go like this. Yes. Can you measure if they're good at leadership? Yeah. Sure you can. You can measure their PT, right? You can measure their grade point average. Yes, sir. But that depends on what you determine that leadership is. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. Can you measure leadership? In any, is there anything you can't measure leadership in? Is there anything where you're like, oh, I can't really judge that? Either, you're saying good or bad. almost kind of like ingrained in just us as humans to like kind of know like what you know when you see it as bad is like leadership wise everyone can kind of agree on those things a lot of times it's not when you see it what do you got I was going to say like you can still have like for the example you're using like great PT scores and good grades like you 
can still have those outcomes, but then there are still people who will say that like the way in which you got there may be good or bad for your service. Okay, so they they did great at PT, but they were really shitty in how they motivated everybody. Yeah. Okay. Can you measure that? Yes. In a way, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You might rank him as an asshole. <laughs> okay. Just like Bill Belichick. But he's effective. <laughs> Right? You can measure leadership. A lot of times people say, no, you can't. Or it's hard to measure, which, yes, it can be hard to measure. But I don't, I've never come across an example where you can't measure it in some fashion or another. Right? And a lot of times it's very much if you know it when you see it. Good and bad, right? Okay. Why do we do that? Sure, yeah. For your job, okay? For parenting, okay? That shit is hard. You can have, you, like, who does, everybody have brothers and sisters? Okay? Same genetics. Are you the same as them? Totally different, right? Same household, same environment, same genetics, and your little brother is a shithead. <laughs> okay? That can happen, but that's your perception, okay? It depends on what your parents are doing and all that stuff. It's really hard. Managing is really, people are awful, okay? We'll get in there. This is my definition of leadership. I think I asked you guys the first day if you had one. I don't think anybody did. The hard part about mine is you have to explain it, which is kind of stupid. It means it's not very, I don't want that crap. Sorry. Oh, hell yeah, it's the best thing you've ever heard in your life. <laughs> Hold on, we'll come back to it. Question. Sorry. This is the Navy. We're commanding officers of mighty and terrible thing. Man to be feared, respected, all knowing, all powerful. Don't you dare say what you said to the boys back there again. I don't know. Those three words will kill the crew. Dead as a death charge. The skipper now, and the skipper always knows what to do, whether he does or not. True or false? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How many of you guys have been in that experience, in, in that situation, in the core, where you didn't know what to do? What'd you do? Okay, good. After the fact, right? Okay, what else? How'd you handle it? What do you got? See for perfection. Huh? See for perfection. What is that? Did that help you see the board? Oh, okay. Basically, taking out the board. Basically, what? Taking out the board. Okay, was it the right thing to do? Yes. Okay. Why did you not know what to do? Oh, how to prevent it? Yeah. Okay. And you were struggling with how to do that, right? Okay. What else? What do you got? Uh, about the chain of command that's pretty bad. Okay. Good. Absolutely. Nothing wrong with that. How many of you didn't know what to do and it didn't go well? <coughs> what happened? Uh, well, I can't think of like a, like a specific instance, but... Um... This is a job interview question, by the way. <laughs> but maybe for like... Uh... <clears throat> Like if uh, an underclassman has like an issue, say with like a scholarship or something, and they come to you and they're like, "Oh, can I miss this out the required activity to go to this thing?" You're like, "Yeah, sure, go ahead." And then it was a required activity, and you get them in trouble, and it's on you. And you're like, "Well, I didn't really know what to do in that situation." Um, but I made a decision, and it wasn't necessarily the correct one, but it was a decision. Sure. And um, so I'm in a class with General Van Alstine, uh, who teaches a business. Uh, been here a long time. So not yet, and he uh, he says that the worst thing you can do is um, is like the whole like don't just stand there and do something. He says don't just do something, stand there and actually give every leadership decision some thought before you act. Um, because if you make a bunch of like that that clip, if you make a bunch of um, 
hasty decision, we can end up in a some deep crap. Sure. You guys are juniors now, right? You got pissheads and freshmen looking up to you, right? There are expectations, right? Sometimes it doesn't go very well, okay? Sometimes you don't know what to do. Again, uh, Victoria's asked before class, the difference between junior and senior psalms. Uh, so senior year, we get into a lot more of the ethics about making those decisions. That's a lot harder, okay? But there's going to be times where you don't know what to do, and it's how you handle it. That's all people are looking at, all right? Sometimes you're going to say, I don't know, or you're going to try not to say it, you're going to make a decision, and it might be the wrong one. And it's all how you handle it after that. Can you develop leadership on the fly? Yes, no, maybe? Yes. Yeah? Anybody say no? Excuse me. Oh, yeah? Do you know room 17 French is? Please open your textbooks to uh, chapter 8, and we'll get started. Excuse me, what's your name? Brad. Brad, why don't you get up here, in front of the class here, and read conversation number 5. What does France say is so uh, general element? Don's Lord pays Q, press Q, to Le Monde, uh, set impression. They said for me. They said they needed a sub for Roberta. I came all the way from, from Nixon. Uh, I always sub for Roberta. Excuse me, why aren't you reading? Uh, emails, um, I'll never come back to, to Bellarmine Jefferson again. You tell them not to call me. What do you think? It's easy for a woman my age and all the money that it costs to travel like Mr. and Mrs. Abagnale, this is not a question of your son's attendance. I regret to inform you that for the past week, Frank has been teaching Mrs. Glass's French class. You what? Your son has been pretending to be a substitute teacher, lecturing the students, giving out homework. Mrs. Glasser has been ill. And there was some confusion at the real sub. Your son held a teacher-parent conference yesterday he was planning a class field trip to a French bread factory in Trenton. Do you see the problem we have? Mrs. Stafford, uh, I have a note to Miss Smith from sixth period today. Doc is a oh, one moment. I'll be right with you. Pretty smooth, right? Dude was in high school. Okay. Can you develop leadership on the fly? Sure. Yeah. 
sure. He nailed it pretty good, right? Good idea? Probably not. <coughs> Probably not the best move. All right? But it served him well. 69. I don't even know what that is. Terrible. We don't need that. You can wing it, okay? And might be all right. Just don't lie, <laughs> okay? Always tell the truth. You don't have to tell the whole truth, but don't lie. Um, so what the hell does this have to do with getting a job? Right? You guys have to figure out how to problem solve. You have to figure out how to be able to, when I asked you guys last class, what do you want out of Psalms? Some of you wrote coding. Okay, I can't help you there. Okay. Some of you wrote Excel. You can Google that and watch YouTube or take a class on Excel. Okay. What I can help you with is the stuff that's going to happen when you go in job interviews and how to get a job and answer those questions and then be able to follow through. There's a reason the core is pushing this. I can make you an engineer, I can make you a nurse, I can make you a teacher. That's not the hard part. The hard part is where you fit into an organization because they really don't know what to do with you guys. Okay. Again, we touched on it, I think, last week, but they're just testing you out even if they hire you. Right. So, how do you get hired? <laughs> I wish there were more to this clip. We know what this is? Have you seen Wall Street? Five minutes. Turn it out. Well, life all comes down to a few moments. This is one of them. What the hell's going on? I'm looking at 200,000 shares, move pal. I want to over part of them. We better be. I'm going to come down and eat your lunch for you. Back to you, Alex. Sorry, Jeff. Look, I love that a 40 is an insult to 50. Their analysts, they don't know preferred stock from livestock, all right? So you wait till it hits south, then we, uh, we wait on the deal, okay? Get back at you. This is the kid. He calls me 59 days in a row, wants to be a player. Ought to be a picture of you in a dictionary and a persistence kid. Fortunately, that's the whole clip, because it's great. Okay, this is Gordon Gecko. If you haven't seen Wall Street, you should watch it. Came out like 20 years before you were born. But that's exactly how I got my first job, and I hadn't even seen this. I knew where I wanted to go, I knew where I wanted to work, and I called the president of the company. We, everything wasn't on Google. I had a book of general managers, phone numbers in the company. And I called almost every single day and asked for the president of the company. It wasn't a huge company, but I don't know, 150, 200 employees. And I called every day and introduced myself. Please come back, like come work for you. Okay, brief, but who I was over and over and over again to the point, and I never got to him. It was his voicemails and his administrative assistant to the point where the admin was like, "Hey, Darren, how are you?" <laughs> you know, I called over and over for it was like two months, and finally she answers the phone and she goes, "Darren, uh, he's willing to talk to you. Call tomorrow between uh, like eight and eight fifteen in the morning." Well, I was enjoying one last summer uh, before the workforce. So eight in the morning, I was like, ugh. Right? I still went out with my friends. But set my alarm, get up, clear your throat, get a little water, wake up, right? And he answers the phone. He goes, Darren, be here Monday morning, 8 a.m. Click. That was it. There was no conversation. Okay? I was like, yes, finally. Holy shit, what am I doing? <laughs> Right? I didn't know if it was an interview. I didn't know what I just knew I was going there to finally meet with the dude that I've been calling, right? So I, I bring resume, you know, where to show up, all that stuff. I know, and he comes, takes me up to his office, and the company was owned by Paul Allen, who's one of the co founders of Microsoft, multi billionaire. And um, this dude was the GM, and we they also owned the Portland Trailblazers. So he had like signed stuff. His office was cool, amazing view, right? Corner office. And, and he's a few minutes late, and he's like, I'm sorry I lost my uh, best friend to cancer this morning. I'm like, well, this is going swimmingly. I'm like, I'm really sorry. So I, I don't even know what I'm getting into. And he sits me down for half an hour and basically says, you're here because you were persistent. You're here because you told me you wanted to be a part of this place. 
Now, I don't interview anybody and I don't hire anybody, but I'm gonna tell you how to get hired in my company. We met for 30 minutes. He spoke for 29 and a half of those. I didn't say a word. He said, here's my two uh, manager's numbers. You call them, tell them I told you to call. That was it, okay? It was literally how I went about, about trying to get in there. It doesn't work for everybody. And, it, and sometimes you're gonna lose faith. And sometimes you're gonna be like, screw you for not calling me back. And that's the wrong play. It's not gonna work if you ever lose it. If you ever go off and be like, man, I've called you for two months, you can't return a simple phone call, right? Um, but that's exactly how I got my first job. And then it was figuring out what to do from there, which we had the rest of the semester for that. The reason we spent today on this is because this week's assignment will be, um, I'll send it to you guys, I'll email it out, but it will be uh, from the book. So um, you should have digital access to it if you don't have it. Um, and I will send that out to you guys uh, so you're good to go. But everybody should have access in terms of what I need you to do. Um, we have PDFs and stuff. So if you don't have the field guide or the workbook, um, that shouldn't be a problem, but you'll, you'll need the other book, okay? Questions about that? and I'll get it all out to you. But for you guys as juniors, you kind of have to figure out you. And that's what a lot of this is. So that you can go and get a job and market yourself and all that stuff. Okay? All right. You guys are killing me today. I don't know if it's me or y'all. Questions? Yes, sir. Is there still a discussion post as well? Uh, I'll email you that out if we're going to do one or the other or both. Okay. But uh, more than likely there will be but they're fairly short. Questions? All right. Well, have a great week. Be awesome.